Anything else? Uh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. 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 <laughs> that was it for the big interview. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not ready for the photo. No, no, no. I'm not, but you're checking. Yeah, I'm checking. You will let you know, but you can check. Yeah. Also, maybe outside... Oh, because you use a lot of shadow and light yeah. in your photos. Yeah. The outside is too bright for photos for you, then. Oh, no, it's going to be okay. Oh, we can try around. We can try. <laughs> then for the interview, I'll put my makeup. It won't take so long, but we do yeah, this first. Not for you. No. What else have you got to do on a Saturday, right? <laughs> Hang around waiting for me. Great. <laughs> not so bad. <laughs> it's not so bad. Okay. Okay. Um, so I begin. No, please do. <laughs> um, so, yeah, first of all, I'm, uh, I will talk in English. Like, my English is like... Blah, Sounds blah. good to me. Okay. It's French English. It's okay. Um, do the best I can. Yeah, and... Uh, yeah, it's very cool to meet you. And uh, as I think when we meet, when you meet people, uh, it's uh, because we have an uh, interest in common. Uh, and uh, I know you, I'm just uh, very happy that you saw the picture in my Oh, absolutely, you, yeah. You, yeah. It's it's great, yeah. To do it. Um, Thanks for stalking me into this. Who is talking me into this? Uh, no, no, but thanks for. It's very difficult if you're on the road or preparing for a tour and someone sends you a request for something, you're not always focused on it. Uh, so thank you for sending a few. Are you available? And then did I have the time to check the photos. Of but course. That's really kind of you yeah. to have an uh, answer. But no, because, you know, just the timing is, is. I just finished a book and then I'm going to go on tour, so I was a bit scattered, but. Thank you for stalking me into it. Oh, I was just a joke. And so I saw you on stage like two years ago. What uh, was that? I know you. Uh, it was in Lausanne. Okay. Uh, it with was during the, the festival yes, of uh, underground music. With Les Out, with this two-piece group. Yes, yes, yes. The, uh, uh, the unique performance. Because this oh, is okay. not a band I play with. This is a band that we just did this concert. Okay, okay. But I found you... Uh, uh, really excellent. Uh, the way at first time, I know you for ten years yep. because you're representing something. I'm going to. I do music as well, and um, for the moment, it's a little bit. Everything goes like everywhere. Yes, but, uh, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> no, I like it. But uh, yeah, I look at. Uh, I like the way you sing. I sing. I try to sing a little bit like you. All right. It's like uh, or yeah. women should. Yeah, yeah. With like your guts. Yeah, yeah. Singing from your guts. Poetry and looking, look the people in front. Yes. And communication, uh, communication direct. Communication yeah, direct. The only way. Exactly. Yeah. Good. And uh, glad I inspired you. Yeah, it inspires me a lot. And uh, I just read some little things about you yeah. uh, by preparing the interview. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah, I have some questions to ask you. Then we start. <laughs> but look, but you tell me that is why I continue to create. That one person tells me I inspire them to do something, even if it's to exist one more day, or to get over a problem, or to create something. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm still here now. Yeah, yeah, so thank yeah, you. Sure. I mean, sure. this directly. Yes, exactly. Yes. So. That's it. That's it. That. And uh, so, Let's I prepared go. a little question. Uh, I'll prepare and something about, answer. Yeah, about your 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 art, and uh, now you tell me it inspired the people around, uh, always giving the change. Um, I was thinking about uh, Okuzai, uh, the, the painter, the Japanese yes. painter, you know, the, the waves, yes. things like that. And he says, uh, when he was uh, 73 years old, he began to understand the real shape of the animal he was uh, designing. Right. Uh, and uh, when he will be 110 years old, every point and every line will have their own life. I love it. And so I think you do the same about words. I love and that concept. Well... How do you feel? I love to misuse words. I'm not, 
uh, educated in grammar or literature. I have my own language, or I use language to my best advantage. It's not always exactly what the words are. It's really the intention. And I love to take a word or an idea, or even a song, for instance, to take a, a song that's very known by another group and pervert it with my intention with my intonations. So to take words somewhere else by the intonation is almost like taking a wave somewhere else by the color or the intensity of the, the color that you're using. So I see this correlation. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, so what about do you think, uh, what, what do you think about uh, some swimming, against the flow. <laughs> I'm an expert. You're an expert. <laughs> I'm an expert. You're an I'm, expert. An, I'm like the salmon of the rock world. I swim upstream always. Yeah, and that's why I have salmon on the menu. Um, to give me the power I need to swim against the coming tides. Look, um, if you start a so-called career, because it's amazing to me that this is a career, it's, it's, I create art, that I've made a career out of it is miraculous, especially swimming against everything, always, forever. Mm -hmm. um, when you tell the truth, and that's your basic reality, this is not a popular commodity. Entertainment <coughs> is not reality. My, I call it more like agrotainment, so it's aggressive or aggravating entertainment. Mm -hmm. Because it, that it's entertaining, of course, Big Sexy Noise, it's a rock band, we are entertaining, it's fun, it's really the most fun I've had creating anything. Because as the world gets worse, I have to find more joy. Then I have to bring more joy as a rebellion, because to me, pleasure is the rebellion against this campaign of fear and genocidal mania exported from the United States of America. But if your basis is truth and reality. This is never a popular commodity. It never has been. The truth has never been popular in all of modern history that I can think of. No. It certainly is not popular. It's not what people want to go to a dance club to hear reality reflected in. They want to go to hear bullshit that says nothing so that they can forget. And this is understandable. It's just not what I do. So even if we're having a good time to this fun kind of psychedelic blues swamp rock band that I have with these great fucking musicians. There are still a lot of gut punches in there. There's still a lot of heavy lyrics. And sometimes the heavy lyrics are said with a big smile on my face yeah. because I'm laughing at the fucking yeah. apocalypse. Yeah. I need yeah. another coffee to calm down. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> Carry on. We can, I can talk. I can walk. And talk. <laughs> Unlike most men are mono, are mono men. They like to do one. I like to do many things. Yes. Yeah, Carry on talk. I can talk and make a coffee. You, you know, I have a friend that is, um, he's, uh, I can't call him, uh, he's, uh, the, 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 the chief of the pilots on FA. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, the head of Hornet, pilot control. Okay. Hornet in Switzerland. Yes. He's a friend of mine, and he tells me, you know, when we are, where, where, if you want to be a pilot, yes, you have to be like a woman. Do everything you have to do. So that's uh, why only three people uh, can can be pilots. Yeah, exactly. I understand. <laughs> I understand the message there. And, uh, oh, I love it. Indeed. Yeah, what, what, I hear you. Yeah, what do you think about the young people now? Which ones? Yeah. The ones on the street? The ones at my concert? Uh, the musicians? I mean, that's a very general subject. It's like yeah. saying, how do I feel about uh, Swiss cheese? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I mean, it's some yo I mean, which youngsters, specifically? I can't sum up a whole generation. Specifically, the one that you can see uh, well, the, uh, the if they're that through, through your eyes, they are a little bit, they, they make you think of you. Uh, Look, do you think something changed between uh, your generation and the next? Things change between every generation, and I think yeah. part of the pr proud of, part of the problem with youth, if they're at my concert, obviously they're, they're already somewhere else. But I think technology has had for as much benefit on society, especially on youth, it has had very negative impact on youth for a few reasons. 
when people talk about, for instance, the 70s, the early 80s, how this oh great romantic idea of nostalgic recollection of communities of people, whether it was New York or Los Angeles or London, Berlin, Paris, creating at this period, it was because if you lived in a small town, you had to physically go to a geographical place where it was a magnet for like-minded people. Now, because of the internet, you can go into your bedroom and talk with someone in China. Very good. However, yeah, but very yeah. bad. Because you're not having this. Yeah. You're having this. And this then is reduced to this. Now, you're going to have to translate. This is redu yeah. And I think the technology of texting and everyone plugged into uh, headphones, listening to music, and texting is the death of soul-to-soul -soul communication, mm -hmm. and this is a fucking problem. Yeah, yeah. You know, when the internet was first coming to be very popular, and I, yes, I predate that, of course, I'm 52 mm -hmm. fucking years old, um, I was warning people that it was, in a sense, a conspiracy to keep people safely in their bedroom where they could not be on the streets causing trouble. Now, a lot of the protests around the world are because of the internet or because of Twitter and all of this, which I don't... I don't I have Facebook myself. The technology is haunting you. I don't have Facebook myself. There are many Facebook sites for me. It's I'm not there. Twitter, I say, I'm a twat. I don't Twitter, okay? Twat or Twitter. <laughs> not that it's not good for some people, but I fear the real communication, which is what I'm thriving on, um, is dissipated. because, And it also makes people... Uh, less comprehensive. First of all, they're numb because of access 24 hours to everything, as opposed to very hungry, as we were when we were younger, to look for something like, where's the music that really speaks to me? So this is this is a, a very uh, duplicitous problem, I think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I think that young pe some young people are jaded, they're spoiled, they feel that nothing is enough, and they will never be satisfied, and they might not create because everything has already been vomited in, in front of them. Others will use this technology to their advantage and start movements or start projects. So it's it's a very immense subject to try to tackle in five minutes. But still, I think the most important thing to learn, to gain for life, is direct communication in a, a physical presence, in a geography of a room or a city with other people. <laughs> Not in your bedroom, uh -huh, uh -huh. talking to Mars. Mm -mm -mm. And you, and you, you also can. Uh, Otherwise, I would be at my home now, having just a televangelistic show from uh, satellite or from the internet, which is a possibility <laughs> in the future. But. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. This is the partner of. Uh, this is yeah. one of my partners. Oh, okay. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. Yeah, hello. Uh, that, that's great. I had that question about technology because uh, I've sent an uh, invitation on my Facebook. Yes. From my Facebook to 500 uh, yes. uh, places. And that's part of the question, what, what, what were your feelings about this? And your, I don't have time to, to mess with this shit. Yeah. And I mean, it's to, the, it's to the detriment of maybe the attendance or what I could sell or what I could be, you know, I don't have the time to be playing that game. I would rather spend 10 minutes, 15, 20 hours speaking to you than 10 minutes speaking to 500 people I don't fucking know. Oh. I don't have interest in someone I don't know. None. Yeah, this is the, the, the question. Yeah. Exactly. But, uh, I mean, although, cool. look, uh, if I do an interview that's going out to people I don't know, well, then if they're interested, then they can get a more intimate experience with what I do. Sure. But not by just text on a page on the fucking in, in cyber void. It's not it's reality. About the cyber void. Yeah. It's not the reality. Yeah. No, it's true. It's, uh, and maybe that's my generational problem, you know. And, yeah, yeah, maybe that shows... You know, that uh, maybe that shows a generational shift that I'm just not hip on that front. But it's not about being hip. It's about having direct, direct, direct soul fucking communication to get the juice of the blood and the life force going. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Otherwise, I could be, you know, jerking off to a magazine and would have the same effect. For sure. Not to get disconnected from that. Uh, sure. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Would you like something? Coffee, a snack, oh, water, well, drink? Yeah, I'll have a coffee. Do you know this machine? Yeah. Carry no, on. At least I'm, I'm probably going to be able to make something. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Help yourself. <laughs> Thank you. I, I've been told you that you do a wonderful curry. I had, I just finished a cookbook. It'll come out next oh, year. Oh, great. It's called The Need to Feed. Yeah, it's uh, actually the Ceridol who talks who, about who the Ceridol, Kevin Ceridol. Yes. Oh, okay. That's why. 
Salty was here a couple of months ago, of weeks ago. What? Salty. Uh huh. And uh, he's been talking about well about the Senegal and uh, okay. the that that house. I said, oh yeah, I'm going to see uh, Lydia Lenson to take sexy noise in in the bed. and he goes like, yeah, I've heard she does that, that splendid curry. <laughs> I just finished a cookbook. It's out next year called The Need to Feed. Oh. Well, it's more than just recipes. I mean, first of all, it's recipes for or, uh, more healthy food, okay. even yeah. healthy desserts. I mean, cakes with beets, Great. chocolate okay. cake with we- be- beets, you know, beets. Oh, okay. So okay. Making, okay. Vegetable things and- making delicious food, but more healthy because yeah. a few reasons. My name is Lunch. I get yes. this. <laughs> but I got this name not because I chose it, but because when I was a teenager before I had a band, living in New York, very poor, like everyone, I worked at a bar for two weeks. And my friends were Mink DeVille, the group, Willie DeVille. And I would steal food for us because we're too, too far to eat. And one night I'm walking with the f- stolen food in front of CBGB's to go to meet them for rehearsal. And Willie DeVille says, Lydia Lunch. And then the name is there before I did any music, okay? But also, as reports from someone who lives in, in Switzerland says, who hasn't eaten at my house in 20 years, <laughs> remembers my curry. Because I would cook often for many people on the Lower East Side and musicians, or if someone, if butthole surfers were coming to town, I would cook for them. Because we, again, were too poor to eat. And then, we're older now, we can afford to fucking eat. But if you're eating this all the time, when you're home, I don't want to look at food that someone else has touched, and I have to stay healthy. But the cookbook is for a few other reasons. It's also to describe perverse history. It started with the idea of the Bacchanalia. Okay? And to... To make something like, where did the, what is the Bacchanalia originally? And really, it's, it's we think of Bacchus as this chubby, curly-haired girl boy with a bottle of wine. Let's go back. Okay. Let's go back. Uh, if we go back, before Bacchus, which the Italians invented, to Dionysus, if we go back to Greece, Mm-hmm. We go back to first the Minoan civilization of women, worshipping the goddess and Gaia of the earth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And twice a year at harvest, they would, the women only, go into the mountains, get fucked up, get drunk, get high, feast, orgy of the women to praise the goddess. Mm-hmm. This carries on. In 1500 years past the Minoan, it is Dionysus. After the Minoan matriarchal orgy of women, the Maenads, Maenads, and I don't know if you watch True Blood, but that's what they base the witch in True Blood on. Do you know the show True Blood? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know Marianne? Yeah. Well, she said she based her character on me. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is why I wrote this book. She said she based her character on me and Ken Russell. I'm like, she's always cooking and making allergies. <laughs> <laughs> I pitched this book based on her saying, the original Bacchanalia, we think it's just wine and dance and something. For 1,500 years in ancient Greece, every... Twice a year was like Glastonbury, okay? It was like a big festival. And the average person, a thousand people would go. You'd pay a pig or one month's wage. Then you were sworn to secrecy. Sworn to secrecy or death. So you enter the temple, and there, they don't give you wine, as they want us to believe. They give you opium. Magic <laughs> mushrooms. Uh, acid and wine. And then you start to lose, but there is all comedy and drama and theater and all the Greek philosophers, Aristotle, Plato. This went on for 1,500 years. And it just kept going on, and people were just sworn to seek, so we don't have that much information. This was why I wrote the book, to talk about this and also other facts about food. So, for instance, I considered a Dionysus, the original Bacchus, who they also called the Betestacled One, the God who comes, and a lot of this is on true blood. 
Because they're worshipping him, right? But what about uh, Wait, all, the, all the Wiccan stuff? Like, yeah, is but, it related to that in any way? Well, the Wiccan can go back to the Minoan, really. It was just before okay. this, okay? I consider Dionysus the original cock rocker. That's what I call him. And all of his groupies, the main is, who this Marian and True Blood is, they're mad women because there were groupies that would follow. You know, most of the gods are gods, but Dionysus Bacchus, who became Bacchus, was the one that was supposedly manifest. So the original cock rocker, with all of his groupies and sexually transmitted diseases. Anyway, so this is the kind of things the book is. And then there's a whole list. Of, this is for the party monster chapter. So then we have a list of food for the par for making a party that's very easy to make. And in the end of the introduction, it says, next time you have a party, and someone drinks a little bit too much wine and prays in Bacchus. Remember that at the Eleusinian Mysteries, they were called, there was also occasionally human sacrifices. So, I mean, <laughs> your friend gets too drunk, you can let him go, or you can just kill him. <laughs> <laughs> this is what the book is. So it's really to also show, because in my music, you know, look, it's very aggressive. If you get past the aggression, you can see the rest of what I'm about. You can see the humor, you can see the generosity, the love, the smell, all the... I wanted to do something that could show all those sides of, that I have inside myself without being so confrontational to people and also being something that's important. We eat every fucking day. One of the lines in the book is, anyone that says to me they don't have time to cook, I say, I don't have time to fucking die. You know, I have to eat. So, the need to feed. And it was inspired by the fact that this woman, who's the fucking wi main witch, was inspired by me. Okay. So she's going to give me a little plug, I'm sure, for the book. <laughs> and, you know, and, every, and look, a lot of my fans are, are my age now, your age, and I'm sure you're fucking cooking. You're eating at home, right? Yeah. Well, come yeah. on. For sure. And these are very simple and very good, and also every recipe is very funny. I mean, but it's I, not I, just like a normal written recipe. There is a lot of... You know, like bend over, you have a beautiful laugh. <laughs> Jokes okay. written into it, okay? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So, also, sometimes I think uh, it's good to to wait a long time to get feed before before you eating. Absolutely. To, to feel that you are a human. Absolutely. And that you need, well, and that you, you have uh, envy to eat. Yes. <laughs> well, there's the last chapter is about detoxing. Mm. Because of just detoxing from everything, but to yeah. detox recipes. Yes. To get back to yourself, yeah. purification. So it's very interesting. It will be out next year, but it was very exciting yeah. for me to write. Yeah, yeah. on Rizzoli Press out of America, and I'm sure it's going to be in, in other languages. So. Oh, no. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 English is the best. But each chapter has musical selection for the evening as well. So I give a list of music to play for these recipes. Uh, yeah. Of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. Come on. Yeah, that's very cool. Uh, so multiple, uh, yeah. In, uh, yeah. It's totally. every, every kind of creative. Well, and it's about well, look what I've always been about, which is the beauty of excess, but in moderation. So yeah. it's really about a form of lust. Right. But if you're going to be lusty, then at least lust for not pure things, but don't lust for garbage. <laughs> I'm not lusting for you know a ham sandwich <laughs> too often. <laughs> I guess so, I guess. And so, what about uh, you? I heard you lived in you live in Barcelona. I live in Barcelona for six years. I've evacuated uh, from America. It's over. Yeah. It's over. Ah. You 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 can't stand. Uh, no. There is something you can say, yeah. for example, Christians or... <laughs> well, for instance, I left before Bush stole the second election. I don't like the beige puppet, as I call Barack Obama, who is mm -hmm. a fraudulent pop puppet of the profiteers. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a fascist state, so I, I wanted to... I can't support myself in America. I haven't ever in my career. I've had to support myself in Europe, so why am I living there? Um, it was becoming so fascist a police state that I went to a country that was only three decades out of fascism, which is Spain. So, and uh, it's a place that's very easy to go to other places from. And it's very beautiful. The, the history of both its mania and its art is, is incredible. So it's had this incredible, horrifying history, right, of persecution and prosecution and murder and banishment. But now it's one of the most mellow 
yeah. non-aggravating cities. Yeah, if you yeah. stay off the rumblers, you have no trouble. Yeah, yeah. If you're on the yeah. rumblers, you might get your purse snatched, but yeah. then you're silly for being there anyway, so. <laughs> you're right, you're silly uh, for being on the rumblers with a purse. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> you listen to, you listen to flamenco, or you listening? You well, I mean, no, nah, I'm not sitting around listening. No, yeah. no, nah, nah. it's beautiful because, and I think one of the reasons, for instance, last year I was able to perform in eight museums in Spain. I had a major exhibition of my photography mm -hmm. is because the history of flamingo or Spanish art is so blood drenched and passionate that they are not it's not unusual to have an aggressive, passionate woman speaking of love and hate. This is very difficult space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, and um, you know, my great, my grandmother was Sicilian, and it's interesting because I just found that for a while the Spanish, the Catalans, had taken over Sicilia. Right. And I'm like, could be a little, so it could be a little Catalan blood in me. Besides that, which I drink from my so-called husband, I'm not sure. <laughs> have, you, have you have you heard about uh, the book uh, that uh, uh, Garcia Lorca made, Federico Garcia Lorca, yes. about Duende? Of course, yes, uh, yeah, of course. And and someone else has written this about about me and saying this that that's yes, the relation. It, it yeah. makes me think uh, of you and uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And for a while now. And what about with with uh, with the love? Because sometimes I think about love and relationships. Think about it all the time. Yeah, and uh, yesterday I was with a friend. We were talking about that, and that was uh, this uh, sentence: uh, "Heart got its reason. That reason don't know. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, look, what I mean, are your re reason if it's not to? Uh, uh, if I can ask you uh, to finish the question, what is my reason? Your reason for love to love. Yeah. I can't help it. I'm just that kind of person. Um, I think that uh, oh, that I'm generous, which is why I create as I do so personally for so long. So I think that I'm, even though I'm concentrating on the negative aspects often, or the obsessive aspects, or the dangerous aspects, I'm still dealing with love, I'm still dealing with relationships, I'm still dealing with love or hate, with life and death issues, in an extreme way. And that's, if I didn't love the fact that I was hopefully helping other sensitive people with what I'm saying, why would I continue to do this? So. But you weren't, you never been uh, into something where you can't help because of uh, course they, they did just. I'm uh, obsessive, <laughs> <laughs> of course. But I was wondering, like, what you've been saying about your the way you speak about love and hate and all those obsessive aspects, and often the more negative aspects. Well, at first. For starters, yes. yes, that's the that's for starters, and then we get into the, the real thing, yes. which is how generous and how difficult it is to cope with yes. all, the whole thing, which is very big. Right. And uh, I was wondering because you've been doing that for very long, yes. and I was wondering how um, how difficult it was to put your life on display. And that's a great question, and actually, it was very easy, and I'll tell you why. I was first influenced by literature before music. I was influenced by Hubert Selby, especially. Okay. okay, these books. And when I read Hubert Selby at such an early age, I thought, even if this is fictionalized, he's putting his guts mm. on the page. And what I learned from him at such an early age is that, look, trauma is universal. So my details are specific. But there is nothing new about trauma, about pain, about abuse, about agony, about desperation. About uh, anger and pain. I, and, exactly. and, if, and if, as I told you, when I was going back pre Bacchanalia, because everything is homogenized down. So we go from the betesticled one, the god who comes, right? The cock rocker, to Bacchus, the chubby little Italian boy holding a bottle of wine. It's the same with female energy. If we go back to the Minoans, the matriarchy, where women are empowerful, powerful, empowered, having wild orgies amongst themselves, worshipping the planet, and channeling the energy of the goddess. And we go back to all that a female really is, not how we've been beaten down and segregated to act pretty beanies. <laughs> Well, if we and, and I think that's what I try to do is get back to the origins of all nature, which is a powerful woman, which is a, 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 queen, a warrior queen, 
mm -hmm. uh, which is a Kali, mm -hmm. which is creation and destruction in equal forces. And I think that's just natural to me. And the first spoken word uh, piece I ever did was called Daddy Dearest. Why at, seven, at 18, I think I'm going to go right to the source of my aggravation, my father. And just... And if you start with that, if you start with the worst, then the rest is pretty easy. Then the rest is pretty yeah. easy. And the reason it was easy for me is I'm not the only one. And I think this is the problem. This is why young people get very alienated. And this is why they turn to music or literature. If they find someone who's, who's speaking to them, then they're not alone. Literature saves me. Music saves us. If you can't have access to anything that you can find that, that relates yeah, relate to this. To mm -hmm. And so at 12 or 13, I realized, look, the issues are huge. I'm just one mouth of it. How can I not tell the truth? And Yeah, well, but, okay, I mean, I understand completely your point of view on that. But then stepping on, it started to do it. It is very difficult. I mean, it seemed place? just natural to me. Okay. It just, and there was no question about it. Okay. It's, it's, it's what came out first. It's like, I'm going. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. And, and again, it's because to give voice to those that could not find it. And, and from a very instinctually early on, that's how I felt. I'm like, so what? My specific details, ooh, big deal. Yeah. So what? It's not the particulars. It's not the town. It's not the details. It's the subject is huge, and we all face it on one form or another, whether it's uh, familial, economic, religious, whatever. And I just seemed I could not not do it. Yeah. It wasn't about, oh, I have to get the strength to do this. It's like, no, I have to get the strength to finesse it into a specific topic and then of course I started with my my own father the father of my country then God the fucker and then I went after them all <laughs> the unholy trinity mm -hmm. boom 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 uh, uh, uh. so and again maybe because I see things as archetypes I see things as this um, starting with you know the origin of, of essence the, the Greek mythology. That's what it all goes back to. I mean, the reason they invented so many gods is because they knew about so many emotions. So each emotion had to have a god. And then we get down to one fucker with a white beard who's got one son. Fuck off. That's just not enough. That's just ridiculous. I mean, if you're going to look to something bigger and it's called energy, I mean, that's just it's not a grandpa. It's not a mean fucking dictating grandpa who says, yeah, you're going to hell. Fuck off. Going to hell. And it just bring, makes no sense. Bring all the people you can, yeah. <laughs> the ones you want to protect, bring them with you yeah. and, <laughs> exactly. hey, come on, let's go together. <laughs> but then, yeah, you've been such a great role model for a lot of people. Well, hey, I, let's say... Don't thank you very much. <laughs> no, that's true. I that's try. True. No, but like, uh, I remember, well, when I was 13, like yeah. you said, you were like, literature saved my life. Too. And, yes. then, and then it, it was music. And yeah. then it was... You'll be probably surprised, but uh, it was uh, Hole's first album. Sure, of course. Ready on the inside. Sure. It was really, really, well, of really mean, and it's really yeah. that same sort of voice you Absolutely. have. Absolutely. It's, it's the only the only record where where actually Courtney Love sings like that. It's, it's yeah. the same on her, because exactly. it was great. That was the only she lost it after that, let's face that's, it. That's the, that's the only thing she ever done good. I know. It's, uh, I it's, know. And it's, it's so very raw, and it's so very strong. <laughs> And then that's exactly, and that's exactly the same relationship. I mean, yeah. and 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 what what would you expect now? Like that's one of the examples that actually has your influence. So what what else would you like to see? What do you mean? What else would I like to see? I don't know. That was one of the examples. Well, how you how you you respond? Well, don't blame life. me for the rest of her lousy crimes, honey. Just because no, she no, did no, no. That, that she did one good record and no, that that what's, next? One. what's next? Yeah. What's next? <laughs> No, no. What's next as far as what? As what, far as what, 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 do, what would you wish? Ah, no, no. What I wish is just to hear you say that music or literature gives you fucking life to go on. You know? Okay. <laughs> Doesn't have to be my music or literature either. I don't, I don't really fucking care, but, I, but there are people still there and coming. That's what... That's, it doesn't have to manifest in another, in imitating my music. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, I would prefer if uh, an architect, a female architect, came up to me and said, wow, your music has really inspired my architecture. I'd say, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a surgeon comes up to me and says, I always listen to you when I'm performing, performing you know, reconstructive surgery. I'm like, yeah. 
you know, I always used to joke in interviews and say, if anyone was really following my career, if anyone had a cultural impact, if I had cultural impact, women would play the tuba. And then finally someone sent me and said, have you heard this tuba quartet? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> But I don't think they were influenced by me. But I'm like, exactly. Because, I mean, the music I make is always different, first of all. It's not a three-chord punk rock, so Riot Girl doesn't really relate to me. Even if they took the energy, that's great, if they yeah, were inspired. Yeah. But the music doesn't. And because it's such a musical schizophrenia, maybe... It, if if someone is influenced and then they make music like that, well, they're making music of one day of yeah, my yeah. existence, which is great. Mm -hmm. I'm much more happy if someone tells me personally somehow. It doesn't have to manifest. And that it just mattered to them to hear this record at this point in their life, to hear this spoken word piece. Because I, because, I know, thing, yeah. because I know it has that effect, and that's why I continue. And it's, it's, it, But it's about my salon mentality. It's like in my ideal reality, we have 20 people here, I'm telling a story, and then we have our own little bacchanalia, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and everyone's singing and dancing and doing their thing. That's my mentality, how far we've devolved mm -hmm. since the original temples. Sword to secrecy. 1,500 years, sword to secrecy. You imagine how grand. You can go see Big Sexy Noise, but you can't tell anyone about it. I would see really. Well, I would do that for. I well, would do performances. I would. I'm. I would love to do performances for women only. Oh wow! You know, just women only, and then mm -hmm. see what happens. But you know. As I'm already accused of being sexist, and then if I did performances for men only, then you know that, that could be interesting also, though, because they might come out a little different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Either walking very tall or they would have shrunk about a foot. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Depends on how they take it. But it's for you, sir. It's Mr. Lunch to you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, yeah, I was thinking about uh, yesterday. Why preparing my question? Yep. <laughs> I was thinking about the fact that uh, music for me. I love music because you, you're always talking about the soul, about uh, oh, oh, the, the spirit, the, the sense, the feeling, the essence, true yes. and makes you laugh or feeling the life. Yes. You know that thing. And um, I was telling myself, for me, uh, music is very uh, cool because it can it can tell me uh, what what. Uh, What's the time? What is the time? <laughs> and when I listen to music, I'm like, oh, oh, that was the time. Exactly, time. yes. That time. Music, a certain music representative of a specific time it's in your life, of course. Yeah, yeah. Time. Yeah. And I think, uh, I was thinking, it's the only thing that makes me remember yeah. about my yeah. life, about well, the things I do, I did. Well, literature does that to me as well. Yeah, absolutely. It, yeah. And are, the, are there books that you have to always go back to? You know, there's <laughs> those few books you have to go back to read a passage, even if it's five years or ten years later. <laughs> But it's interesting that you say that, because to me, in viewing all of it, it's like, as a journalist of my life, then these are just documents of a certain passage of history with each release. So. Not that I can always listen to one of my records and go, that's what was going on at that period of my life, because sometimes it's a wash. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's a document of that hysteria, of either the, the, the time or my hysteria. So, and I feel uh, you know, we're, 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 one minute, we're selling really cool, big, sexy noise lighters. Oh, are you? Silver, See, because they trust the witch. It was my idea. The <laughs> yes, and whiskey flask. Oh, oh great. And they're cheap. Man. I'm like, no, I have special, special. I'm like, cigarette lighters. I wanted to get nice, because I always have a cigarette case, but I couldn't yeah. find the good ones. Maybe next ne next uh -huh. month. But cigarette lighters and whiskey, nice yeah. whiskey flask. Oh, absolutely. Oh, no, no, and panties. No. Because they trust the witch, yeah. Uh, <laughs> last, the last time he said, this big, is not essential. Didn't, well, I never wear them, so <laughs> the last time he said, big, sexy, and noise on the back. Okay. I would make the noise by the thing. These are for the boys. These are for the boys. So when you see a man's ass with noise on the back, you know you're having a good day. Oh, la, la, la. Then you're like, okay, I can smile now. Just that.
The first time I saw my partner crawl out of bed with noise on his ass, it was a happy day. <laughs> Show us your shorts. Rev, you got the Trust the Witch on? Are you wearing your Trust the Witch panties? He can't have. If he pulls his pants down, he might blind you. Don't, no, don't no, challenge him. That. Don't challenge him. We're talking about the B-testicle one. He might just prove where he really comes from. <laughs> Get down behind those drums, son. <laughs> Tell me when you want me. Well, and and speaking of the record, really, um, it, it's really funny because it made me think, like, the energy is really raw still, and and all the anger and, and, and everything is still there, like, still raging and still moving. Oh, so, it's still just, alive, must be still raging. Yeah. <laughs> and then the, one of the, but one of the things that really impressed me is how dramatic the record is. Like, all, 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 well, if you take, uh, show your signs or whatever, well, yeah. every single song is very, very down to earth and yes. very pragmatic. Yes. And I was curious of how you handle all that inner tempest and stay really connected with reality and pragmatic. Just who I am, sister. I don't know. <laughs> how I am. What, what's interesting is, you know, <laughs> look, both albums, the new one is just out two weeks, Trust the Witch. Uh, you know, James and I worked on the songs via the internet. We didn't. We weren't in a studio making up songs. We were. He would send me a song. I would write the lyrics. I would write the lyrics, sing them, send them back. And then when we had enough, we went into the studio. I wanted the campaign to be this: five days, one thousand pounds, big sexy noise. Four years, two million dollars. Courtney Love. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I don't. You know. I don't have to tell you. But, I mean, what's interesting is to work with James like that, because when we were ready to roll, he was just sending me song after song, and I was just writing the lyrics, and they were just pouring out, you know. Um, and I think because we've both been waiting for, you know, all all roads lead to the, the ultimate conclusion here, and I think we were just, I was waiting to rock, and here we go. Mm. And, um, you know, and then we record with two days rehearsal, and it's very immediate, it's very spontaneous. Um, like really, uh, uh, it's very love. Love. your love does pay my bills. It's yeah. huge. I really like that. That's my my boyfriend hates it. Of course. <laughs> hey, how do you think mine feels? It was written about him. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you never write songs about me. Oh well, I did. Don't ever say that to me because you will have a song in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and then he didn't say for a year that he remembered it was I'm like, well, it's work. <laughs> I think everyone can play that song now and then, you know. Yeah, Relates to everyone at some point or another. <laughs> yeah. I was born in March 77. No, ah, okay. <laughs> I was on stage with Teenage Jesus then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then, yeah, how do you explain? Like, I've, I've seen a lot of people, like, who actually, well, was in New York and more or less on, on the same time yeah. time frame that you were. Yeah. And they're all not at all as well as well conserved. <laughs> no, I, I don't even have any makeup on. That's the scary part. So wait till I get it on. I'm just going to be gorgeous. <laughs> well, I'm, I was younger than everyone else at the time, though, as well. So, for okay. instance, when I go to New York, Richard Hell was already 30. I'm 17. Yeah. He still looks pretty good. <laughs> you know, but Patty Smith was is yeah. 13 years older than I am, so and she never wears any makeup. No wonder she looks harsh. <laughs> she should dye her hair every now and then, but I mean that's her. She doesn't need to. But you know, there's, um, Sonic Youth are also five or, or seven or eight years older than I am, so I was the baby. But mm -hmm. I think it's just my energy as well. Yeah. I don't drink either. That helps. But nice. I I, do, I didn't start smoking until I was 30. But I still do love drugs, but just not heroin. So yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like Burroughs. No, he uh, liked only heroin, though. <laughs> but, I love Burroughs. We just, mean, we yeah. just, uh, we just, um, we were on holidays yes. together on the the lake uh, in the Swiss mm. uh, in the Swiss mountains. Mm -hmm. Like uh, never went there. Yeah. <laughs> but it was wonderful, and uh, every night by the lake or uh, in the mountain, mm. we were reading some. Uh, some uh, naked lunch, uh, <laughs> William Burrow, we were just like, ah, ha, ha. But I just, uh, I, I can't read this book for me. I have to, to, yeah, yeah. to, to share it. Um, of course. But great literature should be like that. I think so. Yeah. You want to read out to someone a funny or great or a devastating passage. Yeah. 
But it's all, all, also difficult sometimes to find the people <laughs> to listen to you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Making bands, group. Exactly. Uh, find the good Hard ones. Enough to, hard enough to read a story to one other person, try telling a story to a, you know, a room full of people. If you can find them, it's easy. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm? You are looking. Does anybody want uh, you? you, you do, no. Does anybody um, you want to meet? Uh, is there somebody you're missing? Is there somebody I'm missing? No. Well, wait. Give me a chance. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's not just kill all life. Let's not pretend the entire planet's just died. <laughs> Although if that happened, I mean, I'm sure I could survive. A human roach. Um. One second. Well, I'm, I, let me turn the question around. An interesting meeting I had was at, when I was 14, and Tom Waits, who I've not met since, was playing in my hometown. I'm 14. This is going back. So this is like 19, let's see, the early 70s, 74. So Tom Waits wasn't even anything at this point yet. I mean, he wasn't who we know he is to love in all these records that are great. It was the first few albums. Then he's at the university. And I'm standing there. Wow. I was already going to a lot of concerts. And I'm just standing, I don't know, by the bathroom. And Tom Waits comes out and says, like Tom Waits would, where's the John, John? <laughs> where's the toilet? Where's the John, John? <laughs> <laughs> so fucking cool. And his stage set was great because he had like a street light on stage, on the piano, and like one or two other musicians. So, as opposed to who I might want to meet, that was a great meeting. Mm -hmm. I'll give you one more. So, I must have been about 14 as well. And Lou Reed's Sally Can't Dance tour. Okay, wow, 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 wow. wow. I mean, <laughs> shooting up and everything, right? <laughs> and I'm in the front row because already I'm. Well, I'm already in my own Bacchanalia, shall we say, at 14. <laughs> I'm already well into the Bacchus, more like the Dionysus. And I'm in the front row, and I know the promoters. And so the concert's just fucking amazing. And to be at the concert's over, and the promoter, I'm in the front row. And I even remember what I was wearing. <laughs> A red wraparound dress, fishnet, black force, 14, looking exactly like this. <laughs> the promoter calls me up. Like, oh, Go backstage. Lou Reed is so fucked up. He's in a wheelchair. A drooling. I mean, I went from being on stage wild to just like he had a shot of heroin immediately. I just look at him and I say, Fuck you. And I walk off. Because this was one of my fucking heroes. Berlin was the most important record of my life, you know. And I'm just like, Seeing like this. Fuck oh, man. off. Imagine the arrogance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of funny. Yeah, because come on, what am I going to do? Clean Grandpa's slobber? I mean, get no. the fuck out of here. Get your wit cat out. I'm not going to push you a cat. <laughs> find somebody to push you out of hey, here. Find somebody to wipe the dribble. <laughs> so anyway, I'll give you those little details of rock gossip. That's much better. <laughs> <laughs> I, I met uh, one time, um, ce qui chante là, le vieux... Uh, Le vieil Africain là, qui chante avec Massive Attack. Um, That's the tag. Uh, uh, one African uh, reggae singer, yep. uh, old one, yep, yep. Uh, singing with Massive Attack. Okay, yeah. And I was also backstage. Uh, oh, but, uh, the one. You are my angel. Okay, we don't know his name. Uh, but go ahead. Okay. And, go ahead. and I was also, and, and he also asked me where were the toilets. Yeah. <laughs> also, like, oh, you don't know. <laughs> yeah, I was right. very proud. <laughs> I have to wrap this up. Yeah, we have yeah, to yeah. stop. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't hear the sound yet, so I'm gonna go put some makeup on. Yeah, and we yeah. can start with some photos. Okay, yeah. okay. great. Great. Thanks, We've so. had some good details here. Yeah. 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 No problem. Thank you. Yeah. My pleasure. Really cool. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and. Uh, does anyone want some water or beer or something? Oh, that's fine. That's fine, thanks. A snack? Sure.